Hey, hey everybody, Z Garcia here. Today we're going to be competing while we bake up some macaron delights in Sweet Holic. This game is played over three rounds, and each round you are going to be managing your hand of tiles made up of uh, fillings and the cookies on the outside. You're going to be drawing new ones, you're going to be playing them in front of you, building entire macarons and trying to get the most victory points. You also have a secret ingredient to each round, and if you can manage to score some of those, you're going to have bonus points. So let's go ahead and take a look at how it works. I'll see you on the other side. The game's going to be played over three rounds, and at the end of each round, whoever has the most points in front of them is going to get a, a three victory point chip over here. Second player with the most points will get a two and the third player will get one. After three rounds, whoever has the highest total of these is going to be the winner of the game. So to set it up, we're gonna deal each player five of these tiles. Everyone is going to take one of these uh, uh, tokens, which is a hidden bonus token. So everybody gets one, they'll look at that, but they'll keep it secret. And then everyone discards a tile simultaneously and those will be revealed at the same time. So everyone has their own discard pile. And then you are ready to begin. So we're going to start with this player right here, okay? These tokens, by the way, show you one of the different types of uh, cookies, so one of the different types of fillings, and you will, again, keep that secret. So on your turn, you do one of two things. You can discard a tile to the top of your discard stack here and then draw. If you discard filling, you take one tile. It can come from the top discard uh, of any player, uh, any other player, or you can just take it from the uh, pile here in the center. And if you discard a cookie, then you take two. Again, same options, all right? The other option you have, instead of discarding and drawing, is to play out cookie cards, all right? By the way, you have a hand limit of six, so if you already have five and would draw two, you only draw one. So on my turn here, this player is going to discard that, for example, and then they will draw two. So they might take this one from here and perhaps one from the top because this is a cookie. And then it's the next player's go. When you build one out, you are going to, you have to first play a cookie. You have to have a base for whatever you're putting out and uh, then you can do filling on that. So each one that gets built it has to have to be completed. Let's move these over here. So each one you build to, have, to, to be completed has to have one cookie, and you have to start with one. You can have up to three fillings, and then the other cookie on the other side. You can build up to three in a round, and they have to be different fillings, different kinds. And uh, you cannot, again, start with just the filling, so I could not just do that. And when you play, you can play up to five, as long as they are the same color. Once you complete one, so once I put another end on this, then I can no longer add filling to it. That one's done, of course. There's also a few that are burnt cookies, and you can treat them as wild. They will cap anything off, but it has to be the last tile you play. You cannot start with a burnt one. It has to be the other end. So this player might play this, and then once you play, you check your hand, and if you have fewer than three, you bring yourself up to three. So this player might play that and then take, say, this one here and they're done. Then we go to the next player, and this player might, uh, again, discard and draw, and so on. So they might discard that and take two. They're gonna take uh, this one, and then one from the top of the pile here. The round is going to be over when someone has completed three macarons, uh, the entire thing, or when this stack is gone. At that point, then, we are going to figure out victory points. So let me go ahead and fast forward this a little bit and show you what that might look like. Here we have the end of a round. This player was able to build three of the macaroons, so the round is over. You do all take equal turns, by the way, so when this player achieved this, each other player gets one final turn so that we have equal, even rounds, and then we are going to score. So, we are going to, first of all, reveal whatever the secret scoring was, okay? And it, it gives you a type of filling. Now, this player here doesn't have any of these, so they're going to get no bonus points for that. Uh, this player gets the strawberry bonus, but it's not completed. You have to have the entire cookie to score, so this is also not going to net them anything. Now this player over here actually will get points for the burnt cookies, so we'll come back to them in a second. 
and this player over here would have gotten uh, grape, but they don't have any. But let's say for the sake of our example here, I'm going to just switch this out and I'm going to give them that one, all right? So there we go. And now we are going to score up. So you get one point for everything and you get an extra point for any filling that matches your secret. You do not get points normally for the burn, burn ones. So this player over here gets one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay? This player didn't complete anything. This one's not done. So that's also nothing. This player over here gets one, two, three, four, five. But they also get points for the burned ones. A uh, single point for each, where normally they would be worthless. So it's actually uh, six, seven. Okay? For them. And then this player over here is going to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then an extra point for each filling that matches, so eight, nine. It's still this player over here who has the, uh, the most, right? So eight, nine, ten, yeah? So they're going to get the three. This player over here is going to get the two, and this player gets the one. And then we shuffle all this up and play another round. And then a third round after that. And then we figure out who has the highest total of these. And whoever that is, is the winner of the game. So, there you go. This is a simple and cute little game that definitely has an audience out there. Uh, it's a very straightforward game. It's easy to play. You can play this with just about anybody. And I think it's just, it's so giftable, you know. It's for someone who likes that theme especially, if you know someone who does... This is a wonderful little present for them. They're going to enjoy the game, and uh, it just feels very personal and cute and, you know, appropriate. So, I think, that, again, there's definitely an audience out there for this game. But that is not to say it, it is not without its flaws. There are definitely uh, things in here that I wish were a little bit more interesting, I guess. So, let's talk about it. We're going to start with the theme and the setting making the macarons and uh, deciding whether you want to hurry up and maybe use some of the burnt ones just to keep pace with the rest of the players at the table. Uh, it's just a, it's a lovely little theme, very warm, very welcoming, adorable. I like it quite a bit. The aesthetics, lovely as well. Uh, the artwork is so cute, so, uh, you know, the pastel colors and the whole, uh, the, the style and the illustrations. Good uh, component quality as well. The cardboard in this is very nice. So this is a good one for folks who hate shuffling cards. And so you can just, you know, use the tiles or maybe for kids. If you're worried the kids might be too rough with a deck of cards, then this is a good one for that, you know. It, the tiles are going to be able to take a beating. And, uh, you know, you, you, you won't have to worry about that. So I like that quite a bit. Now, replay value, I think, is quite low in this game. The game plays over three rounds. All three rounds are going to feel the same. I'm going to talk about game mark in, in just a second here. But, you know, there's no surprises here. There's nothing new. This You will not really learn anything from playing multiple times. So I think the replay value, not so great. And you probably want to play with more players, if at all possible, okay? So skew towards four. Three, if you cannot get four together, but you want that many players at the table, I think, just to have a little more interaction, to have more discard piles, reduce the luck in the game by doing that because you have more open information you can take from. So, um, you know, that's not going to keep hitting the table over and over, I think, again, unless it's a kid's game and they, they really love it and they want to keep playing it, then that's fine. The uh, game mark, very samey, three rounds, uh, and it's very easy to have ties as well, with no tiebreaker provided in the rulebook. Because the points the players gather just translate to the 3-2-1 scoring in the game, that means you could very easily have, you know, one player with six points, another player with six points, and they just share the victory. That can easily happen. So... I wish that there was something else in play there that would allow for there to be another tiebreaker, for there to be uh, scores that are not so obviously close and everyone is, you know, just sort of stepping on everybody else's score. So that would be a little bit better. And just the three rounds over, you know, it's, it, they, don't, they don't do anything new with each one. They're exactly the same. You could play this game for two rounds. You could play for six it doesn't really matter. It's just because that's when the tokens run out. Okay? 
Uh, ease of play, very good. Simple actions, simple scoring. I like all of that. And that's one of the places where the game shines. For someone who is used to games like Uno, games that are mass market, then yes, absolutely, this is going to work out. It's going to give them some interesting drafting choices, this idea of discarding to draw. It's very well implemented, very simple. And then just once they've played a round or two, then you start to understand those sort of tempo implications, you know, of, uh, well... I gotta hurry up because I'm falling behind. I'm, I'm looking around the table and that person's got two of them done working on the third already. I'm over here. I've only got one made. I've barely started my second. So that's interesting. I like that. At that point, then you start to settle for anything, right? You, you'll you make a, a, a macaron that has a single filling at that point just to score it. Lastly, tactics, luck, strategy. I've kind of talked about that. And it's not bad, and I think the main interest is that. It's sort of a tempo-based interest. This idea of how slowly do you go? Do you do you slow it down so that you can get your secret scoring and you can you know find that color and complete some that are at their max, meaning the two cookies and the three fillings, which is as large as they can be. Do you slow down enough to be able to accomplish that? at the risk of not completing one, not capping one off, and then it's scoring nothing at all? Or do you set the set the pace by maybe making a quick one with maybe just one filling, and then that's already in the bank, and you can then maybe slow it down in the middle somewhere, but making sure you're holding something that can respond to an endgame trigger. Uh, if you are the person who has the bonus for the burnt ones, you definitely are in a good position to... Uh, to set that pace. So I think the, the you know, it's, it's not, again, revolutionary. It's kind of obvious stuff, but um, playing it reveals that to you and definitely gives you that sort of very gentle pressure of, hey, don't fall behind. You, you won't score at all if you don't cap this one off. So there you go. That's kind of what I think about it. I think this is uh, just a, a lovely, I mean, look at this packaging. The box is gorgeous. Lovely, well put together, nice component build, um, an adorable theme. This is, I mean, it's already gift wrapped even, right? I mean, you could just make this a gift for someone, and I think if they are a fan of the macarons, they're really going to like this game, um, just based on that alone. If you're looking for something to play with kids, I think this might be a good one as well. I think for, as a filler, for... Gamers, this is going to be too light, so I would recommend you you pass on this one. For someone who is a very, very casual player of games, then perhaps, if they can really get into this theme, or again, if they're playing in, an, in a mixed age group. But um, other than not being that innovative and having some issues with the sort of, you know, the, the game arc and the tiebreaker, you know, they're not being a good tiebreaker... Other than that, the game is cute, and I wouldn't advise you against it. Um, but it's not quite a high score from me. So this is going to get a 6 out of 10. And if you fall into some of those categories, certainly grab this one. Or, hey, buy a copy for someone and uh, show them that you're thinking about them with some lovely macarons. Put some macarons in there, too, like the real ones, so they can mm, and play this, you know? So there you go, everybody. That's going to do it for me. My name is Z Garcia. I'll see you on the next one.